people, for, 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 for common people, for, for example, like you or I, and yet we're footing the bill for it. And it's, I think it's a legitimate concern. And I think a lot of that will be addressed as we move forward and a lot of the private efforts that, that Kevin mentioned where it will be more possible for common people to go out into space once it is no longer solely the domain of, of governments. Sorry, and just to add, add to that just a bit, and this is why you see a lot, you know, a lot of these people doing, like a lot of these private industries doing this, because they're tired of being the spectators on the sidelines. They want to be, they want to be the ones going into space, and in fact, one of the founders of the X Prize. Are you familiar with the X Prize? It's similar to the um, the Lindenberg Prize, is it? The Ortiz. Sorry, Ortiz Prize. Sorry, the Ortiz Prize, where you know first first private company to put a spacecraft like a with carrying two humans into space or above 100 kilometers and back and do that twice in two weeks. First one to do that won 10 million dollars. Uh, the investment in that project is much greater than $10 million, but that notwithstanding, uh, the founder of that prize said or, or started doing that because he wanted to become an astronaut. He wanted to get involved and in, in go into space, but couldn't because the government turned him down. He didn't do well on his health, on his medical or whatever, whatever it was. I don't remember. But so he started doing this stuff because he wanted to secure an opportunity for himself to get into space. So again, a lot of these entrepreneurial uh, visions that you see going are just, as you say, because people want to want to get involved. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm uh, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I think that this might sound critical of you, and I don't mean it to, but it seems to me that in the beginning of the 21st century, Science as a human endeavor is in trouble, seriously in trouble, and I think part of that is political. And so I think that, I mean, I've never heard of the Rideau Institute until I saw it up on your slide. Um, there's never any issues around science when it comes to um, national provincial elections, unless it's, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just not part of who we are as citizens of this country and, and in terms of our civic and political. Um, awareness as far as I can tell. And I think that that probably needs to change. To find out the Canadian Space Agency has had an interim president since whenever it was that you said, that appalled me. I mean, it, and, and, that this, and that this had an impact on um, the advancement of Canadian technology with European space, I mean, that's, that just seems to me to be ridiculous. But I never actually hear Stephen Harper say anything about anything that's related to this, unless he's worrying about, as you talked about, um, the Arctic. So, I mean, I think part, one of the problems is, is this is a PR issue. And I think that um, in, in issues that are maybe a little closer to home, and we're looking at, you know, the debate in, in the field of biology between creationism and uh, evolution and those kinds of things, then maybe we do become more engaged. But it seems to me that this is a really important policy issue, that science itself as, a, as, a, as an institution is not doing a terribly good job of making the case. I mean, we're sitting in a center for inquiry, and it seems to me the majority of the questions that you've had have had um, a somewhat troubled nature to them in terms of challenging you in, in terms of what you two think, important, think is important. And, and that's legitimate, but I, I, I don't see that debate going on in the broader arena, and, and especially in the political arena, and I think it needs to. And the reason you don't see the debate is because it's not going on. Right, well, I, but I, I think the, the scientists need to start making the case publicly, and I, I applaud you for, for doing that here this evening, but it needs to, I think it needs to be broader. And, you know, to, to be fair to the current government in Ottawa, this is an issue that has been neglected, you know, across political parties and, and across administrations. But uh, I'm, I, I, I've got another Carl Sagan anecdote here, so this, this, this is a good one. Um, in, the, in the 70s, the U.S., uh, there was a senator by the name of William Proxmire who was very much opposed to a lot of space activities. 
he, he was actually opposed to government waste, really. So, so he saw this as a waste. And one of the programs that he tried to terminate was SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Program. And in fact, one year, he, he used to give out these Golden Fleece Awards to things that he considered to be like the greatest waste of taxpayer dollars. And the NASA SETI program was awarded his Golden Fleece Award uh, one particular year. So there were a lot of people, you know, space enthusiasts like myself and Kevin that, you know, kind of put this guy down, you know, you know, the guy was obviously not very smart, blah, 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 lacking vision, all that stuff. But, you know, Carl Sagan, and, and, and again, uh, um, just another hallmark of what a remarkable man he was, he recognized that what you need to do to connect to people is to relate your interests with their interests. Now, one thing that Proxmire was very concerned about was nuclear disarmament. He was very much into the peace movement, and he was very concerned about the, what was going on with the Cold War, the nuclear arms race with the Soviet Union at the time, and the long-term survival of humanity. So the way that Carl Sagan framed it was the value of SETI to you, or to, to humanity as a whole, was that if we were to receive evidence, a radio signal of an advanced extraterrestrial civilization, well, that gives hope to all of us that annihilation, self-destruction, is not the natural and inevitable endpoint of an advanced civilization. And once it was framed in that context, Proxmire dropped his opposition to the SETI program. So when you mention something like, you know, all Harper cares about is national sovereignty or, 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 or patrolling the Arctic or something, maybe that's a place to start this, maybe that's the place to start this discussion. Maybe that's the doorway in there to get the discussion and the debate going in the direction that we all wanted to go in. So aligning our interests with the interests of the people who are in the positions of power and controlling the purse strings. First of all, I just want to say I think you know you've you've hit the nail on the head from my perspective, and I, I just find it interesting that that on the one hand the Canadian government highly emphasizes you know learning science and math and all that to the to the extent that you know. Uh, several years ago, the, I think it was the Ontario government that was looking at downsizing all of the arts programs within high schools and whatnot because they needed the science and technology, but then to find ourselves in a position today where it's like science and technology is not a, you know, a popular, popular topic in everyday discussion. And what I would like to sort of offer as some food for thought is the fact that a large proportion of Canadians and their knowledge of what Canada has done in space stopped at the Canada Arm on the space, on the space shuttle. Um, the fact that um, the Canada has the, uh, the arm on the space station and now Dexter, they didn't know about it until they were launched. And yet these were projects 15, 15 years in the making. And I rack that up to the fact that back in the 80s, when, when SPAR was building those Canada arms, they, they made it each individual employee's purpose or, or mission to popularize and to talk about what they're doing. And the companies nowadays, given you know, a, variety of, a variety of variables, and, and it's a long list, uh, companies nowadays have basically put, for lack of a better term, a gag order on their scientists and engineers working on these government projects and, and, and working on these kinds of things saying, you know, keep it on the down low. We don't want any more attention than we absolutely need on this project because, and this was stated by an actual member of the Canadian Space Agency, the fact that Canada's, Canada, the Canadian Space Agency's budget has been frozen at $300 million a year, right? compared to the US's $16 billion. And from a, an actual member of the Canadian Space Agency, they said that they don't like raising awareness of the good that they're doing for fear that the government will turn around and say, oh, well, if you're doing that well with 300 million, then 200 million, 
you should be able to 